Okay, Second Chronicles 24, Joash is the new king of Israel. Jehoiada is the high priest that has anointed him and got him into place. If you want to learn more about how Joash got in, go read the last two chapters. It's a bit of a drama story. So verse 1, Joash was seven years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Zibiah of Beersheba. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. So Joash turned out to be a pretty good king, at least for a while, at least until Jehoiada had passed away. Uh, verse 3, And Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. Then he gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go unto the cities of Judah and gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year and see that ye hasten the matter. Howbeit the Levites hastened it not. So here's the thing that's, that's a challenge here is he wants to improve the temple. He wants to make it better. And he tells the, the priest to go out and do it, but they're not really getting around to doing it. They're kind of taking their time, not really putting a lot of effort into it. In verse 6, And the king called for Jehoiada the chief and said unto him, Why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection, according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the congregation of Israel for the tabernacle of witness. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God, and also all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord did they bestow upon Baalim. So this gives us a little bit of a background in some of the things that happened during Athaliah's reign, that uh, the the sons, basically, the sons of Athaliah, which, I mean, if you think about it, she killed most of the ones who were going to be the ruler in Judah. So these could be other sons or more the men who followed Athaliah, basically. They went in and they desecrated the temple, basically. They broke a bunch of stuff in there. They changed it around for the worship of Baalim. So in the last chapter, remember, they went in and after Joash was made king, they broke down the idols of Baalim and got rid of all that stuff. They were cleansing out the temple from this idol worship. So Joash is saying, hey, we're, you know, we should be going out and asking for uh, a donation, basically, of all the tribes to help to repair the house of God and maintain it. Why haven't you done this? So verse 8, uh, and at the king's command, they made a chest and set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring in unto the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought in and cast into the chest until they had made an end. Now it came to pass that at that time when the chest was brought unto the king's office by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe and the high priest's officer came and emptied the chest and took it and carried it to his place again. Thus they did day by day and gathered money in abundance. So there they filled up the chest. When it got full, they brought it in. They dumped it out, went out, left the chest again. It filled up again. They brought it back. They kept doing this. Verse 12, And the king and Jehoiada gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord, and also such as wrought iron and brass to mend the house of the Lord. So the workmen wrought, and the work was perfected by them, and they set the house of God in his state and strengthened it. So they used this money to pay the craftsmen to do the work to rebuild it to do the reconstruction projects, to make it nice, to improve the temple. Uh, verse 14, And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada, whereof were made vessels for the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister and to offer withal, and spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiada. But Jehoiada waxed old and was full of days when he died. 130 years old was he when he died. It's a pretty good life. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. Now, after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. So this is, uh, verse 17 is talking about when Jehoiada left. Jehoiada was probably one of the major people who was influencing the king, that helped the king to go in the right direction, basically. Good advisor. So the princes of Judah, these are more the political leaders of Judah, not religious leaders. 
they came and they made obeisance to the king. So they basically are ing they're ingratiating themselves. They are getting in a position of good favor with the king and uh, getting themselves in a position so the king is hearkening to them more now. So there's more political influence in Judah rather than religious influence at this point. Uh, verse 18, when they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served groves and idols, remember groves is, is uh, the fertility worships uh, that happened, and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. Now this is, this is kind of an interesting thought to think about. Why would they switch to worshiping idols? It's because it benefits the people who are building the idols. They're building an industry for themselves and making themselves wealthy. And so idol worship is better for them, not worshiping God. There's no money in worshiping God, basically, but there's money in making idols. So the, that's the challenge that has happened. Verse 19, yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord, and they testified against them, but they would not give ear. So there's prophets coming to them saying, God is unhappy with Israel. We need to repent. But they're not being heeded, basically. Uh, so that's a classic sign of uh, the, one of the changes over in the uh, pride cycle, basically, that's happening right there. Verse 20, And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah the son of Jehoiada the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king of, in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon it and require it. And it came to pass at the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against him, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men and the Lord delivered a very great host into their hand because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. So these, we see this a lot. When Israel follows God, he blesses them with peace and abundance. When they do not follow God, and try to seek their own riches, he blesses them with punishments. And I call that a blessing as well because it's about humbling them and helping them to repent and see how we need to get back with, with uh, using God. Uh, so let's see, verse 25, And when they were departed from him, for they left him in great diseases. So he's not in a good situation here, basically. Or they didn't leave him, they didn't like give him diseases, basically. They, he was badly injured. So probably from some from the fighting when they when they raided Jerusalem, he got injured in some of those battles, and so they've left him basically. Uh, his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest. So there's a group that says, "Hey, you didn't follow the priest. We're going to blame you. So we're going to we're going to oust the king for not doing what he's supposed to do. We're going to cause revolution here." And they slew him on his bed, and he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they buried him not in the sepulchres of the kings. So they didn't think he was worthy to be buried with the kings. And these are they that conspired against him, Zabad the son of Shimeath and, and Ammonites, Jehozabad the son of Shimri and Moabites, remember Ammonites and Moabites, descendants of Lot from his two daughters, basically. Uh, so not true, they're, they're distant cousins of Israel. Uh, now concerning his sons and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him and the repairing of the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the kings. And Amaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. So a new king is coming in, Amaziah. Let's jump over to the next chapter to look at his reign. Unfortunately, we're back in the wickedness cycle. So let's see if Amaziah can get Israel back out and get them righteous again.